The day is young, but already the temperature has climbed well above 90 degrees. The streets are buzzing with young people on bicycles, headed to school. Buddhist monks make their daily rounds for donations of rice and money from the faithful. Marketplaces fill the capacity with vendors selling all types of goods. So many people, yet so few who know of the love of Christ. Welcome to Myanmar, the Golden Land. Formerly named Burma, Myanmar is home to over 45 million people of whom only 4% profess to be Christians. 89% of the people are Buddhist. This fact is evident by the large golden pagodas seen on the skyline of many cities. There are 135 different people groups in Myanmar, including the majority group Burmans, and there are over 150 different languages spoken. In some ways, the culture of a thousand years ago lives on in the lives of the people. Many homes are made of bamboo and grass. The primary means of transportation is on foot. It is not uncommon to see a water buffalo pulling a plow in a rice field or a cart of vegetables to market. Hill tribe peoples still weave and wear traditional clothing to identify their tribal origins. In 1975, after being challenged to go and teach a seminar, Norman Ward made his first trip to Myanmar. He met with the national Christian leaders and learned of their work. His heart was greatly touched by the needs of the Christians and the many challenges they face in reaching such a complicated society for the Lord. He learned of the language barriers, the tribes who did not have a translation of the Bible in their language, the tribes who had no written form of their language at all, and how difficult it is to break through the Buddhist veil to win the Burmese people to the Lord. Upon his return to America, he, with the guidance of others, formed Myanmar Christian Services. The purpose of the ministry is to promote awareness among American churches of the varied needs in Myanmar and as a fundraising and distribution vehicle to help start churches, support indigenous workers, and reach out to the many thousands of people in Myanmar who have never heard the good news. Government restrictions in Myanmar prevent outside missionaries from coming in to the country to work. By God's grace, His people giving and the diligent efforts of the faithful servants in Myanmar, the works multiplied. New churches were started and people came giving their hearts to Jesus. The elders in Myanmar and Norman Ward began to see a need for a Bible college to be established to train new preachers and teachers. In 1983, after months of prayer, God provided the necessary funds to purchase the land for the first Bible college, Myanmar Bible Institute. MBI originally consisted of one building and three acres of land. The first classes held at MBI had less than 20 students. Thanks to the generous gifts of God's people, MBI now occupies 18 acres, several buildings, a student body in the 80s, and there are over 160 graduates since 1987. Hello, my name is Johan Mana. I'm serving here as president of uh, the school. I'm enjoying very much uh, working here because we have very fine faculty members and we have very good teamwork and we have very good uh, potential for future growth. By the year 2000, we are hoping to have 100 students uh, per year. MBI is located in the center of uh, Burma. Uh, we can reach everywhere from here. Sometimes uh, we students used, used to go out to uh, different places, uh, especially during Christmas breaks and summer breaks. We strongly believe on uh, biblical authority and uh, we strongly focus on the teaching of New Testament Christianity. We thank you for your help and uh, your cooperation uh, to run this school for His kingdom and for uh, His glory. By the grace of God and the generous gifts of many Christians in America, funds were raised to build three more Bible colleges over the years. Eastern Bible Institute, EBI, was established in 1993. It's located just outside of the capital city, Yangon, on five acres of land. 
Students come from all over Myanmar and from many tribal cultures to further their education in biblical studies. Well, um, to talk about EBI, in terms of uh, the student body we have, I think our school is almost uh, one of the few schools that have students from many different backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds. Our student bodies come from a uh, people group of Lisu, Rawang, and Chin, and Myanmar, Karen, and Mro, and Kaya, and so on. So we have different variety ethnic groups from Myanmar peoples. We are committed to the to the task of developing excellent leaders to reach Myanmar for Christ. Currently, there are over 80 students attending EBI. Deep into the western region of Myanmar lies the Chin Hills. The Chin tribe populates western Myanmar and across the border into India. Until recently, foreigners have been forbidden by the government to visit there. In 1993, Edward John Bill, a longtime associate of Myanmar Christian Services and an elder member of the Chin tribe, told Myanmar Christian Services of a need for a new building at a small Bible school in the Chin Hills. And so, unexpectedly, how the Lord works, I can't, stay, I can't say. Uh, within a month, the result came. They are willing to have $10,000. And so the money arrives, and the two men came down again, uh, getting, uh, taking the money with them, and that was the starting of the Bethel Theological Seminary in Kalimu area at the foot of the Chin State. Thanks to the generosity of an American businessman, the money was raised and construction began on a three-story building at Bethel Theological Seminary. Although we try our best, it is difficult to come to this stage with our own strength. And right now we have um, this seminary sponsored or supported to a great extent financially by the Myanmar Christian Services under the forwarding agency of Brother Norm and under the generosity of uh, Brother Jim Willoughby, and we are very thankful to them. We have right now 75 students, and these students, when they graduate, they most become full-time ministers in the churches, in their respective churches. Among the Chin people in Chin State and in Kali Valley, which is the foothill of Chin State, about 40 villages uh, and about more than 40 churches are in restoration movement. But we have only 18 preachers. Among them, only five preachers hold a degree. So we need to train our young people for our future, and they will be our future leaders. Many of the children in the rural areas of Myanmar do not have the opportunity to go beyond the village schools for their education. High schools are rare in these areas, so few make it past grade school. The preachers and church elders in Myanmar started Bethany Theological School in 1996 to help these youth. Originally, the students at BTS were meeting in a small bamboo house. As the Lord has provided, they now have 20 acres of land donated by believers in the area. The excitement was so great about the new school that members of the local churches gathered to build a fence around the property as livestock freely roamed the area. The stones for the fence were taken from a nearby stream, carried by hand to the property, and now a fence surrounds the 20-acre BTS campus. Bethany Theological School currently has a three-year course purposely designed to train qualified preachers, teachers, and church leaders. It is located near the Mulashadi village in Patal Township in Kachin State in the northernmost part of the country. Many other works are being supported either wholly or in part by Myanmar Christian Services. 
T. Pungsar, an instructor at EBI, has been authoring Christian tracts specifically designed to reach out to Buddhists. A printer refused to print part of the tract in fear of Buddhist retaliation. T. Pungsar amended his writing and added Revelation 22, 18, and 19 about adding to or taking away from the Word of God. The printer printed the entire tract. Myanmar Christian Services covered the printing costs and pays Pungsar's salary as an instructor. Laisa Fish and others have been translating biblical commentaries into their native languages to use in the libraries of the Bible colleges and wherever else they are needed. They are also authoring Christian study materials for the colleges. MCS is helping to pay for the printing costs of their work and their salaries. Graham Dockham P., the original founder and headmaster of MBI, saw a need for starting churches in the many villages and towns which exist along the railroad. I want to tell why we choose railroad mission, why we have a railroad mission. In uh, Myanmar, for transpo uh, transportation, we mostly use railways. So people in Myanmar mostly living uh, uh, near railway station and along the railroad. So to contact and to reach them, it's easily that uh, we traveling by railways. So that way we can contact uh, non-Christians along the railroad. In 1995, Graham started the railroad mission with a two-fold purpose to evangelize unreached peoples in Myanmar and to have a placement for the many graduates yet to come from the Bible colleges. Nyi Nyi and Win Su, both graduates from MBI, are serving as preachers in two towns north of MBI. Many other workers are being supported through Myanmar Christian services. Preachers in village churches in the Chin Hills, to the north in Kachin State, to the south in Yangon. All are spreading the word of God literally to all parts of the country. The way the Lord has blessed the work in Myanmar through the past 25 years has truly been amazing. God's people giving to his work have made a tremendous difference in the countless lives throughout Southeast Asia, but the work is just beginning. All of the Bible colleges are still in the infant stages. As the works are growing, more needs to be done. Some students are being turned away from the Bible colleges as there is not enough dorm space. Currently, EBI needs to erect a new boys' dorm to house those wishing to come. They also need classroom furniture and a building to use for chapel and classrooms. EBI is also in the early stages of developing a graduate school for more advanced degrees. A classroom building at Bethany Theological School is in need of completion. Salaries for instructors and other workers and funds for new curriculum and teaching materials need to be raised. Johan Dabe, the preacher at one of the first Christian churches started in Yangon, has expressed a need for a new church building. Currently, his church is overflowing with people, and there is scarcely enough room to keep everyone in. They have had to change locations once already to meet their demand for space. In their present location, they are landlocked with buildings on all sides and no room for expansion. They need $30,000 to get a building and property where they can grow. There are many preachers who need to have a salary to help them with transportation costs, materials, buildings, and so on. Although the members of their churches give, their income is very low. In a recent meeting with six preachers in the Chin Hills, it was such a heartbreak to hear of their works already in progress and what hurdles they were facing and how little they needed by our standards to progress and then tell them that we did not have the money. At present, our budget is fixed with a finite amount of money being set aside for the various projects, salaries, etc. in which we have become involved. As new needs arise, funds must be raised to accommodate. Please pray for the work and the workers. Ask God how you can be a part of the Christian outreach in Myanmar. Lives are being changed. How many, only God knows.